Happy Sunday. We are so excited that you are here, that you are watching and worshiping with us today. Uh, I hope that you've had a great week and that you are ready to hear what the Lord has for us this morning. Hey, before we get started, I want to ask that you share this link on whatever social platform you are currently watching from right now so that your friends and family and really anyone can hear what the Lord is doing in Vienna and in Austria and around the world. Feel free to chat with each other in the comments and hey, maybe you'll find out that someone watching lives closer to you than you think. So let's make those connections today. Amen. Well, let's kick off this service with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for, for waking us up this morning, God. Thank you for giving us breath in our lungs. God, I just thank you for this service. I pray blessings over this service, God, that you would have your way today, Lord, that the words that are spoken would, would just take hold in our hearts and our, and our minds and our spirits, God, that we would be changed from the inside out from the words that will be spoken today. God, that you would continue to lead us and guide us in um, whatever situations may lie ahead of us. 
Lord, again, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship you online like this. God, we don't take it for granted. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's worship this morning.
There was a moment when the lights went out When then a claim it's victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history They're all on the cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens rolled Oh, there King Jesus Oh a moment when the sky lit up a flash of light and breaking through when all was lost he crossed eternity the king of life was on the moon for in a dark hole too where our Lord One miraculous prayer And we're forever changed And all hail King Jesus
Hey, good morning, International Fellowship. We are so excited to share part three of this series that we've been in talking about habits. I hope that you've really enjoyed these last couple of weeks. I, I have really taken this to heart. Even personally, I have a habit of eating during the night. In fact, it's a habit that I started about 30 years ago. Um, I'll go to bed and then during the night sometime wake up and get up and go to the kitchen, find me a snack and then go back to bed. Sometimes I do it once, sometimes I do it twice, or maybe even three times in a night. And I have developed that habit over a period of many, many years. Well, I want you to know that I have taken this to heart and chose that that's one habit I wanna break in my life. And so today I wanna to ask you, what one habit do you need to break in your life? I've already put steps in place so that I do not get up and eat anymore during the night. And so I wanna encourage you to do the same and think about it, take it to heart, as we share this message with you today. You know, we believe that even though this is the final message in our series, it's something that God has been saying to us and will continue to say to us, especially during this time of COVID. If we're honest, this last year has brought many changes in our life, and I know it has for me personally, and I imagine in your life as well, you've probably developed a few habits that you need to break, things that you need to change. Well, friends, this is a wonderful time to make those changes. It's a wonderful time to respond to God's word and say, I need to add this to my life and I need to take this out of my life. And I know that as we do our part, God's going to help us. You know, I want to remind you of this important quote that Craig Rochelle gave us. He says, successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. We've been saying that each and every week, but we want to remind you, we are not ordinary people. We are the people of God. And because the Spirit of God lives in us, He empowers us to live a different life. So we're not just going to do certain things occasionally, but we are going to do things consistently. And when we do, it will bring the victory in our lives. You know, the first week we ask you this important question, who do you want to become? We're going to talk about that again today because we know that it, healthy habits come from healthy processes. Last week, I want to thank Pastor Tony for sharing part two of this message as he talked about the life of Daniel. And in Daniel's life, we saw the consistent habits that this young man had and how the habits that he established, how they brought him into a place of favor and victory. He asked the question last week, what one habit do you need to start? I hope that you've answered that question. I hope that you have thought about it this week. What one thing do you need to add into your life? Pastor Tony reminded us, make it easy and make it obvious. Make it easy and make it obvious. Well, today we want to ask you another question based on who you want to become. What one habit do you want to break? Last Sunday, we talked about what habit do you want to add. Today, we want to ask you, what habit do you want to break? And we're going to look at the life of Samson. So you can turn your Bible to Judges chapter 16. I want to begin reading in verse number one as we talk about some decisions that Samson made. And specifically, we see how he made one bad decision that was then followed by other bad decisions. In Judges chapter 16, verse 1, the Bible says, One day, Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza, and he spent the night with a prostitute. Now, what a way to open a chapter, right? I mean, if you're reading the story of Samson and you begin reading in, in verse 1, I mean, this is a powerful statement. He goes to a city named Gaza. Now, what's important about this city is it wasn't close. Samson lived in a town called Zora, and yet he walked approximately 40 kilometers to this city called Gaza. Now, we know that were, there was no taxis, there was no train or Uban, so he must have walked. And as he walked, it's literally, this, this distance between, uh, between Gaza and Zora is 40 kilometers. I don't know if you check your steps every day, if you track your steps, but I've looked up how many steps is 40 kilometers. Friends, it is approximately 52,493 steps. Samson didn't just wake up one day and find himself in Gaza. He took 52,493 steps in the wrong direction. He had plenty of time to think about it, to change his mind. And yet he consistently took steps towards a place that would lead him to destruction. Not only was it a place that was so far away, but this was the headquarters of the Philistine army. And as you know about the story of Samson, they wanted to kill him. They tried to trick him, to deceive him, and ultimately to destroy his life. But Samson didn't just 
wake up one day and say, hey, today I, I, I hope that the Philistines will kill me. Today I hope that my life will be destroyed. No, he took, he took one decision, and that one decision to go to Gaza, to sleep with a prostitute, it began a downward spiral in his life. Friends, I want to encourage you today. God sees us. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. God wants to order our steps, but it's important that we take steps in the direction God wants us to, not just steps that will lead us to a place of destruction. Most people don't destroy their lives in one day, but it's one small habit after another small habit, one step after another step that leads us to that place. You know, so I, last week, again, we asked you, what, what's the one habit that you want to start? And we reminded you, let's make it Let's make it obvious. Let's make it easy. Today, we want to ask you a simple question. What one habit do you want to stop? What one habit? Based on who you want to become, what one habit do you want to break? It can be an ungodly ha habit. It can be a sinful habit. It can be an unhealthy habit. It could just be a habit like I had that just is not good for you, where I got up and eat. I was getting up and eating during the night. But what one habit is really something you would like to change the direction of in your life? You'd like to take away from your life. I want to encourage you today, think about who you want to become, and then let's ask God, God, is this habit taking me in that right direction? In James chapter 1, verse number 21, James writes, Get rid of every filthy habit, of every habit, all the wicked conduct, and submit to God and accept. Here's the key. Accept the word that he plants in your hearts, which is able to save you. Friends, I want to remind you, we can't do this by ourselves. We can't break habits just because we have the will to or we feel like we're strong enough. But it's God who tells us, get rid of those things, but accept, submit yourself to the word of God that he gives us, which is able to change us, which this verse says is able to save you. Friends, I want to encourage you today. Let's ask God to come and take those filthy habits, those ungodly habits, those habits that lead us in the wrong direction like Samson. It's easy to say, well, pastor, there's, there's 10 things I want to stop doing. Well, today I, I want to encourage you. Let's focus on one. Let's focus on a single habit today. As you commit to prayer with me in a few moments, let's not just say, God, I want to stop this and this and this and this. Because the reality is, if we try to do too many things, we really won't do anything. But today, let's commit one unhealthy habit, one ungodly, one sinful habit. And we say, God, I want to take this out of my life. Maybe it's your attitude that needs to change. Maybe you just sometimes, you, you know, your attitude stinks. It's just not what it should be. Maybe you complain too much. Maybe you gossip and you say things that you wish later you would not have said. You, you can't control your tongue. Maybe you lose your temper. Maybe that's a bad habit. Maybe you're addicted to pornography. Maybe you're addicted to substance abuse like alcohol or something, drugs, something that you know is not healthy for you. Maybe it's your eating habits, but whatever it is, again, we want to answer the question, who do I want to become? And are my habits helping take me in that direction that is pleasing to God? Have you ever noticed how hard it is to start a good habit and how difficult it is to stop a bad habit? I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but you know, it doesn't work for us. If you're really trying to do something good, you have to work for it. In fact, when I think about good habits like exercising, you know, you set your alarm, you choose to get up early before you start your day, and you say, I'm gonna go exercise, I'm going to go outside and jog or walk, but you open the door and it's cold outside. Maybe when that alarm goes off, you're like me, it's, you're just tired and you think, oh, I just, need to sleep a few more minutes, but you push yourself to exercise. You discipline yourself to establish that good habit. But what happens? It takes months. It takes months before you begin to see the results. I read an article last week that said that if you consistently exercise and do things that, that help you help with your health, you will see the results in seven months. Friends, that's a long time to wait and consistently do the things that are right before you receive, see the reward. Maybe you have a spiritual goal and you want to establish a spiritual habit of, I want to pray, I want to read my Bible, I want to be close to God this year. 
And you continue every day to get up and to do those things consistently. And you know, in the first day, you, you don't feel like you've really changed. Maybe you're happy that you've done it, but, but the reality is it takes time for spiritual growth. It takes time to bear the fruit of the Spirit in your life. If you're like me, you're probably very sincere and you say, God, change me, help me. And yet there comes a moment where you, you probably lose your temper or you say something you shouldn't say and you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? Friends, it takes time to do things that are good and to see the rewards in our life. But bad habits are the opposite, right? I mean, it doesn't take long to see a benefit or the fruit of a bad habit. I mean, sin may seem fun at first, but there's always a consequence that will follow. It may seem like, man, I enjoy this. We can give in to our sinful pleasures, and immediately when we do that, we, we see the immediate benefit. We see the immediate result of doing something that really is not pleasing to God, but, but it feels good to our flesh. You know, so good habits take a long time to see the reward. Bad habits take a short time to see the benefit or the reward. You know, there's an old saying, though, that maybe you've heard before that says, sin will always take you farther than you wanted to go. And it will always keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And it will always cost you more than you wanted to pay. Friends, the Bible teaches us that sin is it, it seems pleasurable. It is good for a season. When people do things that are wrong, it's appealing to our flesh. But the Bible also tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, this faith chapter, that Moses chose to suffer. He chose to suffer with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Friends, bad habits, sinful habits, they may feel pleasurable for the moment, but I promise you they will always cost you more than you wanted to pay keep you longer, and take you farther. So today, let's ask God to help us. Last week, we, we said that a good habit, if you want to do something that's, that's good, establish a good habit, make it easy and make it obvious. So today, the opposite is true of a bad habit. We will have to make it hard to do. If you want to break a bad habit, you need to make it difficult to do. I mentioned to you about me um, trying to break the habit of not eating during the night. I have, I have purposely put things in my, in, in my way so that when I wake up during the night to remind myself not to go to the kitchen, but to go back to sleep. Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14 and 15, he says, Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of evildoers. Verse 15, he says, Don't even think about it. Don't go that way, but turn away and keep moving. If you and I really want to break bad habits, then we must make it difficult. You know, we must turn away. We can't just give in and do as the wicked do, follow their path. That's the easy path. In fact, you know the scripture. The Bible says that, that broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to salvation. Friends, many people go the easy path. Everybody takes that easy road. But if you really want to break a habit and you really want to please God, then we must break away from that. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving in the direction God wants you to move in. You know, in Austria, we have a, a word that we say a lot, octum. We, we say this word, which means, you know, uh, be careful or warning, draw attention to something. And so I want to give you four warnings if you want to break a bad habit, things that are important for us to remember, things that I think we really have to be careful of. I think that the enemy, Satan, can use any of these things to try to keep us bound to our addictions, to our habits. But today, let's, let's recognize what they are in our life and ask God to help us with them. The first is the wrong place. Come on, can you say that with me? The wrong place. If you think about it, there's probably a place where you practice your bad habit. Whatever your bad habit is, I guarantee you it is connected to some physical location, to a place. You probably don't sin when you come to church, right? I hope you don't. When people come to church, they're surrounded by godly people. They're surrounded by uh, God's presence. Of course, in that moment, no one's going to think about doing something that's wrong. But it's when you're alone, it's when you're in the wrong place, it's then that you can find yourself in trouble. 
I remember when I was probably 14 or 15 years old, I was invited to go to a, to a party. And I really wanted to go. I thought that it was going to be a, a fun party. And my mom and dad uh, asked me, who was I going to see? Who was going to be there? And finally, after I convinced them to let me go, I went. But when I arrived at that place, I discovered that it was the wrong place. I discovered that there were people there who were doing things that were wrong. And, and there were no adults that were around. There was no supervision. There was no accountability. And I immediately left. Why? Because I knew that if I stayed there in the wrong place, that something bad was going to happen to me. Friends, I want to encourage you. Be careful of the places where you practice your habits. It's those places where the enemy will use. There's an old children's song that we used to sing that says, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Have you ever heard that before? Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. And then part of the, the song says, Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Friends, be careful where you go. Remember that verse that we just read from Proverbs. Turn away and do the right thing. Be careful of the places. The second is this. There's always going to be a vulnerable time. Be warned today. There will always be a vulnerable time when you and I will give over to sin, will give into a bad habit in our life. Most people don't watch pornography while you're sitting at a table with your family eating a meal. People are not just sitting around with their friends doing things that are wrong, watching things that are wrong. But it's when they are alone, when they are bored, when they are at a place where they're discouraged, it's important to remember that the enemy will use times in our life where you and I can be vulnerable. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse number 1, we find the verse, the story of David. David was the king of Israel. He was a man after God's own heart. But he made a decision based on the time. He was not where he should have been. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 says, In the spring of the year, when the kings normally go out to war, David should have been with his army. He should have gone out to war, but he stayed. He sent Joab, he sent the Israelite army out to fight the Amorites. But David stayed behind in Jerusalem. David was in the wrong place. And then if you continue to read the story, it says at the wrong time, he went up. It was the evening. And he looked out among from, from his patio and he saw a woman bathing. And he began to lust after her. Then he sent for her. And then he slept with her. He committed adultery. She became pregnant. And because of that, David had her husband killed so that no one would know of what he had done. Friends, I want to encourage you. Let's be careful. Each one of us have vulnerable places, vulnerable times. I don't know who you think you are, but I can tell you we're human. And you can be a man of God, a woman of God, but it only takes one wrong step in the wrong direction, one wrong moment, one wrong place, and the enemy will use those things to destroy our life. If you know that you're vulnerable to make a bad decision, then, then make a decision today to stay away from the wrong places and to stay away from the wrong time. The third thing that I think would be a warning for us is this, the wrong mood. Be careful of moments when you're tired or when you're angry or when you're hungry when you're bored or when you're depressed. Every one of us, we experience emotions. I don't know about you, but honestly, during this time of COVID, I, I know that there's times where I've probably put on a little extra weight because I've, had, I've eaten out of comfort. I've eaten out of moments where I'm just tired. I don't feel like going out and exercising. I know that the lockdown and the restrictions have just put that on me. Friends, it's not just about your health. It's about your spiritual health. It's about habits in your life that the enemy will use because of the mood that you're in, because of the, the, the state of being that you're in. Every one of us have those emotions of being tired and angry and hungry and lonely and depressed. We all have moments where we're vulnerable to temptation. Many people think, well, we're vulnerable to, to temptation when we are at a low point in our life, when something bad has happened and we just are weak and we give in. And I think that's true. But I also think the opposite is true. You are probably most vulnerable after a spiritual win, after a big 
moment in your life where where you've seen God do something amazing and you just feel invincible. It's in that moment where, again, you have to guard the mood that you're in, the state of being, because the enemy can use that to hurt you. The final thing I want to share with you today is important, and that is we have to be careful about the wrong people. The wrong people can lead you in the wrong directions. You know, studies tell us uh, that from, from every generation that the closer you are to someone, the more likely you will have some of the same habits that they have. It's true. I mean, each of us, we have habits that we've inherited probably intuitively from our parents or from our family. But the people that you're around, if you notice them, you'll begin to notice how you do things like them. You practice habits like them. In fact, Pastor Melinda and I have been married for 30 years. And I can tell you over these 30 years, we've become more similar the longer we've been married. We begin to think alike. We begin to practice certain habits that are, the, that are similar to each other. So I want to encourage you. It's true. The people that are around you, take a close look at who they are and look at their life and reflect on what habits have you taken on, whether for good or for bad. You know, there are people who you desire to be with, who you enjoy being with. There are people that I surround myself with, people that I enjoy spending time with because they lift me up. They help me. They encourage me. Even this week, we've, we've Pastor Melinda and I have been had the opportunity to talk with some friends who, who really we have always respected. And, and the time we spent with them has really encouraged us. It's lifted us up. We, we feel like they have helped us to take uh, steps towards God in positive in, in, a, in a moment where we've needed to. So I want to encourage you, friends, be careful with the people you're around. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 20, the Bible says, Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. How true is this verse? I mean, if you surround yourself with people who are wise, you're going to become like them. But if you surround yourself with people who are fools, people who are sinful, people who are doing things that are wrong, you're going to become like them. Please don't misunderstand me. We need to have friends who are believers and friends who are unbelievers. People who follow Christ and people who are yet to follow Christ. We should have friends that we can influence for God. We need to be salt and be light. But you also need to guard your heart from people who you know will pull you down. Paul reminds us, Bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. And so there can be people in your life, and if you're around them and they're bad company for you, they will begin to little by little corrupt the morals and the integrity that you have. You become like the people you're around. So if you're constantly making bad decisions, then look around at the people in your life. Because I can promise you, people who are making bad decisions, if you spend time with them, the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong mood, the wrong people, you'll find yourself again taking steps to places that you never wanted to go. That's why we say it's almost impossible to live right when you live with the wrong friends. It's almost impossible to live the right life, a godly life, the life you want to become when you're surrounded with the wrong friends. So as we close today, I want to ask you again this important question. Do you like the direction your habits are taking you? If you were to fast forward your life five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and you continue to do the same things you're doing today, where are those habits taking you? For good or for bad? Do you like the direction that your life is heading? Are you happy with where your life is going? Friends, the habits that you have today will shape who you will become tomorrow. Those habits that you and I are living out today, they will shape who we become tomorrow. And so as we pray today, just as we have these last few weeks, let's take time to reflect and say, Lord, who do I want to become? Who are you calling me to be? And the habits that I'm living today, for good or for bad, what do I need to start and what do I need to stop? I want to lead you in prayer right now. I believe today's the day we stop making excuses. And it's important for us to recognize who God is and to experience that if God is with us, He will give us power to make all things new. Friends, you don't have to continue to live with bad habits. Not one. You can continue to become the person God's called you to be. So I want to ask you to pray with me right now. And as we do, what one habit? Come on, take this seriously. Commit it to God. 
What one habit do you need to break in your life today? What one addiction, what one sinful act or behavior do you need to change today? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that during this time, you have reminded us that we've, we've all, Lord, in, we've had the wrong perspective as we've suffered through this time of COVID, as we've had grief and we've lost things that were important to us. We've established some things in our life that probably need to we need to let go of today. I pray that you would remind us specifically of the things that are leading us in the wrong direction. Lord, we thank you for the good things that we are establishing, that we can make those things easy and make them obvious and we continue to repeat them and you empower us. But you also empower us to let go of things, Lord, that bind us, things that cause us to stray from you. So right now, come on, everybody, would you pray with me? Say, Jesus, I ask you for your help to set me free, to break this habit in my life, to break this addiction in my life, to break this sinful behavior in my life. Come on, ask him right now. Say those words. Lord, I need your help today. I ask you to help me to make it difficult. May I make sure that, that I don't find myself in the wrong place or the wrong time, Lord, with the wrong people, but help me to guard my mind. Help me to guard what I see. Help me to guard what I hear. Help me to guard where my feet go. And may you give me the power, Lord. May your Holy Spirit convict me and remind me and draw me near to you so that I can break these habits in my life. Come on, everybody. I know you're watching this video, but I hope you're praying with me because God will give you the power to, to be free from whatever it is that you and I need to be free of today. He will make all things new in your life. So would you ask him right now? Lord, we thank you for hearing us today. We thank you for responding to us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to pray with you today if you need to receive Jesus. You know, there are no magic words. You can't just say a prayer and, and again, repeat what I say. But when you come to Jesus, and when you say, Jesus, I need you, I turn away from my sin. The Bible calls that repentance, that we leave the things behind and we come to Jesus. We repent and turn from those things and we give our heart to him. In that moment, Jesus will come in. The Spirit of God will come in and he will make all things new. If you and I, the Bible says, become, if anyone is in Christ, the old is passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So Father, today we pray. You can pray with me. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and make me new. I turn away from what's wrong and I commit to live a life that's pleasing to you. I need your help and I ask you for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we pray some sincere prayers today and I know God has heard us. So if you need us, please reach out to us. Would you please make sure that you send us an email, a text message, write something in the chat. Let us know how we can pray for you and let us know, again, if you've given your heart to Jesus so that we can help you disciple you and continue in your spiritual journey and your spiritual growth with God. Praise the Lord. We love you, everybody. Let's continue to pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that word this morning. I, I hope you were following along in the YouVersion Bible app or taking notes. Um, and if you weren't, this is a great series to get into the habit of doing that. Amen. Well, before we take time for our giving, I want to give you a few announcements this morning. Uh, first is if you have a teenager or you are a teenager, then you need to come out and hang with us Friday nights at Fusion. Every Friday starting at 530, we have a service just for you. We meet upstairs in the main hall at Bongasse and are taking all necessary precautions to keep everyone healthy and safe. We would love to see you this Friday night. And if you have any questions or would like more information, you can follow us on Instagram or email us at fusionvcc at gmail.com. Finally, our growth track class. If you still haven't signed up for our May growth track class, that, uh, this is the last week to do that. It starts May 2nd at 1030, and we want you to be a part of that. Growth track is the first step in connecting with us more and finding your place in VCCIF. Registration is open now on our Church Center app, and we would love for you to be a part. So right now we're going to move into our give and greet time. 
Uh, giving is something we truly believe in here. We believe in giving our first 10% back to the Lord. We have three ways you can do that, either by PayPal, uh, a bank transfer, or you can always stop at the church during our office hours and drop it off there. We also believe in blessing others. So thank you for continuing your mission support during this time. And not just missions, but your, your all around giving, your tithes and your all in commitments. We have all been so blessed and we will continue to reach people for Christ with your help. So thank you for staying faithful. If you haven't really started tithing yet or just you're on the fence about it, let me challenge you today. Like I said earlier, this is a perfect time in the middle of a habits series to start that. If you have questions, uh, you can talk to your life group leader or contact us at the office and we'll be happy to answer your questions. As the loop plays, uh, please greet each other in the chat and let's engage as an online community. We'll be right back with our closing prayer.
close this service today, I just wanted to remind you that you can always join us in person at Bongase campus every Sunday at 8.30, 9.30, or 10.30, uh, and at our D22 campus at 9.30. Uh, but be sure to go onto our Church Center app and reserve your seat in advance. Uh, but let's say our closing prayer together. Father, help us to be the people and the church that you have called us to be. A people who always build up and never tear down. Who always encourage and never discourage. A people and a church who take a message of hope everywhere we go to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great week, and we will see you in your life groups.